Oklahoma is a rural uh, state. We face a situation where it's becoming increasingly difficult to be able to uh, recruit physicians to go into rural communities. Those physicians that are in rural communities often find themselves very overwhelmed. We are using the telemedicine platform uh, is, and the telehospitalist uh, specifically to be able to uh, come up beside those rural providers and, and develop a team approach to help take care of those patients in the hospital and either, either take care of the patients for them while they're in the hospital or, or supplement their care uh, so that they do get uh, some relief from the, uh, the pressures of trying to cover those facilities 24-7. Our intent with trying to make this video is to try to get the knowledge that we've learned in, in trying to help uh, develop the team that it takes to do the telemedicine, uh, to optimize that team and to make sure that we're providing excellent care. First of all, you have to make sure that everybody understands uh, who the patient is and that we have the right patient, uh, which surprisingly is a bit of a challenge sometimes with uh, telemedicine in that you are uh, on a cart typically and, and taken into the room and so the typical cues such as the room number outside the door uh, is not there. One of the things that we've trained our presenters to do is to uh, make sure that they introduce the patient uh, and tell the room number they're in, the facility they're in, so that everybody's on the same page and everybody makes sure that we're looking at the, at the correct patient. Mrs. Smith, this is Dr. Rader. He's going to be helping take care of you today. Uh, Dr. Rader, this is Ms. Smith. We're in room 107 uh, at this facility today. Uh, you do have to develop a little bit of rapport. I make sure that the, the patient can hear uh, what I'm saying, make sure that they can view through the camera so the presenter is really responsible to be those eyes for me to make sure that the patient is, is hearing adequately and that the equipment is functioning, that the screens are presenting me to the patient. Uh, and so that that communication can happen just as if it was happening in real life. But during the, the beginning part of that history and physical, um, when we're taking that history, I try to make sure that I'm communicating directly with the patient and I can get that story in their words. And that's, that's a, a very subtle issue, but it, but it can be significant if, if you're getting interrupted since the person in the room typically uh, has the ability to interrupt over the camera uh, if they want to. So that's, that's something that is very important to train the uh, presenters uh, to let the physician interact with, uh, with the patient. One of the, the biggest things that I try to make sure that the presenter is aware of is where the lens is, that, that field of view. They need to make sure that they're not standing between me and the patient as they present. And so it's a little bit different, especially if you're dealing with a nurse or, or an experienced nurse practitioner that's used to doing their own exam. They'll typically get in the positions they would to do the exam that they would. And they have to remember that they're really presenting the exam to me, not necessarily doing the exam themselves. And so uh, they need to not stand uh, between the camera and the patient. I need to be able to see where they're placing the stethoscope. I like to guide the exam. Uh, so I have a, a way that I go through the exam that they get used to, but I tell them really where to where to plate the stethoscope and and even describe it in in different terms like left to, left of the sternum and up to uh, centimeters and that sort of thing. So I will have them place the stethoscope, but I always ask that they don't move the stethoscope until I'm I give them the cue and I just say okay uh, and just keep the exam moving that way, but. We move to palpation. Palpation is, is a bit of a trick, obviously through telemedicine. It's not a direct exam, but you can still gain a lot of information. Uh, the palpation is a little bit of an intricate exam, and it's actually an exam uh, with fluid strokes. And so sometimes that takes an additional amount of training to be able to, to do that portion of the exam. Uh, and then moving the camera through the fields and, and the remainder of the exam is, is pretty intuitive. But those are a few of the details that I like to make sure that, uh, uh, that people are aware of when we train the presenter. Finally, if we have to move to any of the, the extension devices such as the exam camera uh, or otoscope, uh, I try to make sure that the, the presenter understands that essentially I'm in that camera 
And so I'm looking at what they're directing me at, and so they need to be very careful that when they switch me over that, they're ex that they know where that camera is pointed uh, for obvious reasons sometimes, but that, that, that camera needs to be uh, directed at the field of view of where I'm uh, wanting to look. And also they need to understand that it's, it's uh, not good to try to move the camera around as I'm trying to, I'm, I, it kind of takes me on a, on a ride and can induce some motion sickness if, uh, if you're not careful. And so it's really important that they understand that that camera needs to be pretty stable. The other piece of that exam is when they're, when they're looking at that, uh, something pretty specific and you're zooming in on an area with an exam camera, they need to be taught a tripod approach where they're resting their hand on something solid and so that camera is stabilized uh, so that they're not moving that camera around. Especially if you're using an autofocus camera, it's very difficult for that uh, camera to find its uh, focus if you're moving that camera around too much. Uh, so those are some of the, the finer details of, of the actual exam itself that really helps the, the uh, person on the receiving end be able to accomplish a good exam.